Hi Grade 12s, this is a video to guide you through some of the questions in Day 10 Optimization Part 2. So I ha hopefully you've had a chance to try the starter already. It is not straightforward, but I've tried to write out um, like a lot of lines of working, so hopefully you'll be able to follow that through. In purple I've written some of the kind of the notes and the thinking that I was doing as I went um, to try and you know fill in some of the blanks there. So um, let's look at some of the examples. Um, this first example is a really good one to take a look at. So it's a cylinder inscribed in a cone. Um, the cone has a radius of 6 and a height of 10. Um, the cylinder has a radius of R and a height of H. And you m might just be able to, about be able to see that they've marked in the distance between the top of the cone and the top of the cylinder as 10 minus H. So 10 was the whole cone minus H for the cylinder. Okay, this question uses the idea of similar triangles, which um, should always be in the back of your head with these optimization questions if you can see a triangle involved. Um, in particular, these kind of cone-based ones. Often it will be like uh, maybe a cone is being used as a water container and it's partway full or something like that. Um, so we're trying to find an expression for R, the radius of the cylinder, in terms of H, the height of the cylinder. So what we need to use, as I said, was um, similar triangles, which means that the triangles are the same shape, one's just bigger than the other one. So they'll have the same proportions. So I'm drawing around a purple triangle, which is like the whole full size of the cone, and the blue triangle, which is the bit above the cylinder. So Based on similar triangles, that blue cone's proportions should be the same as the purple cone's proportions. So the blue cone's proportions are that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the base and the height, which is 10 minus h. And that should be the same as those same measurements in the purple one, which is 6 and 10. Um, and that's the whole idea behind trigonometry, isn't it? That this idea of um, similarity. So I want to find an expression for R in terms of H. So I want R on its own. Um, and I'm going to multiply across by the 10 minus H. I think at the same time, I might simplify that fraction. So it's 3 fifths, 10 minus H. OK, so that has got us an expression for R in terms of H. Um, I, as this is an optimization question, I'm imagining I'll need to use that as a substitution later on. Find an expression, this is part B, find an expression for the volume of the cylinder. So we know volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, it's in our formula guide, but you'll notice at the end of the question it says in terms of h, that means h is the only variable we're allowed on that side of the formula. So I'm going to have to replace r with 3 fifths 10 minus h, and that is all squared because it's pi r squared h. This is a non-calculated question, so um, while I have answered part B, I am like just looking ahead at part C, I know I'm going to have to tidy this up because it's a bit of a mess at the moment. So I think I will drag the 3, f oh, it will be 3 fifths squared, won't it? So that's going to come out as 9 over 25. I'm going to move the pi to the front, well the pi was at the front. Um, I think I'll move the h out the front from the end of it, and then I've got 10 minus h squared. So I took that 3 fifths to the front, but it was 3 fifths squared, so I made it 9 out of 25. And I think I'm going to expand the bracket, just because I know I'm going to be differentiating. It's much easier to deal with um, expanding a bracket than having to use the chain rule, uh, the product rule. Okay, 100 minus 20h plus h squared, and then I'm going to take the h into the, I'm going to distribute it into this bracket. So I've got 100h minus 20h squared plus h cubed. And I'm keeping that constant out because the constant there, the 9 25ths pi, um, obviously if I if I distribute it completely, I'll get these fractions everywhere, which I'll probably want to avoid for my calculations. 
Um, and it's that 925th pi is just going to hang around for a lot of this question, I think. All right, so I'm happy that that's as much as I want to do with part B. Part C is finding the first derivative and the second derivative. So now that I have kind of done all that pre-work here, like um, moving um, things around, expanding, distributing, I think this should be a little bit easier. So I've got 9 25 pi times 100 minus 40h plus 3h squared. And then the second derivative is also pretty straightforward. So it would be negative 40 plus 6h. There we go. First and second deriv derivatives. Hence, find the radius and height of cylinder with maximum value. Okay, so we've got three functions here. We've got volume to height. We've got the first derivative. We've got the second derivative. I want to find, I want to maximize this volume. So I know that the maximum will be when the first derivative is equal to zero. That's when we find a maximum. It might be that we actually have a minimum as well. Let's see what happens when we make this equal, the first derivative equal to zero. Okay, I'm going to divide by the 9 25ths pi, so that disappears. Um, I'm going to change the order of my quadratic just because this is what I'm happier seeing and I'm also happier seeing the equals zero on the right so I'm gonna just change how that's written okay so now we need to um, solve this quadratic equation um, we it's a non-calculated question so we could use the quadratic formula or we could try and factorize I think I'll try factorizing I know to make 3h squared I've got to do 3h times h um, I know to make 100, one option is 10 times 10. Um, I can see that it's positive 100, but I'm adding up to negative 40. So I think they'll both be negatives. And I'm just going to check that. So I'm interested in, does this get me the right term in the middle? Minus 10h, minus 30h. That will make minus 40h. Okay, so I didn't have to resort to using the quadratic formula, which is a good thing. So... 3h minus 10 equals 0. That gives me that h is 10 thirds. Or h minus 10 equals 0 gives me h is 10. I've got two possible solutions. Right. Let's go back and have a quick think. The height of the whole cone was 10. So I don't think the height of my cylinder being 10 will work. Um, if the height of the cylinder is the same as the height of the cone... It means that there's no space, that like the radius of the cylinder will be zero. So I think I want to reject this answer. So it means there's only one option. H equals 10 over 3. Uh, it said find the radius. So I've also got to find the radius. Now I'm going to go all the way back to part A. I've got a formula for the radius. R equals 3 over 5, 10 minus H. Okay, and now I just need to try and sort this out. Okay, um, I'm going to think of this as 30 over 3 minus 10 over 3. So R is 3 fifths times 20 over 3. Oh good, the 3s will cancel. Um, R is 20 divided by 5, which is 4. Let's see, do we have some units? Yep, we're in centimetres. Do we need to calculate anything else? Hence, find the radius and height of cylinder with maximum volume. Um, I think we've got the radius and the height. We don't need to do anything else there. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a trick to get started with this one using similarity um, and then being fairly confident with our algebra that we can do some tidying up to make our later work easier. Um, it would have been much more work if we'd kind of stuck with one of our first options and tried using the product rule, especially as we had to differentiate it a second time.